You're now listening to Churchy Life with Church Funny. Every week, we're bringing you fun conversations with real Christians from every walk of life. Make sure you visit churchylife.com for more. Welcome to Churchy Life, the podcast with Church Funny. This is your host, Damon Collins, the creator of Church Funny. I want to thank you for checking out this episode once again. And of course, we have a guest, and it is a very special guest. This is my friend. He is a hilarious comedian, writer of scripts, screenplays, television shows, uh, original series. He is um, a producer of comedy shows, a manager for several um, comedians and artists, and you know him as one third, one third of the playmakers. This is Jason Fredericks. Jay, say what's up to the people for me, please. Hello, good people. How are you? Very happy to be here. Damon, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. It's good to be able to talk to you for the show, even though it sounds like you just finished preaching a mighty word to the people of God. Uh, <laughs> I know you've been on the road, on tour with um, with your brother Kev and with all the, um, the comedians from that tour. So l- just let everybody know a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you have going on for the few people who might not know, you know, know okay. about you. My name is um, Jason Fredericks, son of Sheila, son of William. Um, from the house of from the house of Fredericks, no. um, <laughs> and, uh, old older brother to Kev on stage, uh, and Michelle uh, um, McLean now because she's married, and so um, and we are you know I, I wouldn't say the originators. I think we were one of the first to put black church comedy on the internet in the way that. It started uh, when YouTube was before Instagram and Facebook. Now right. um, we were putting the uh, black church videos, how to shout in a black church, 10 types of black preachers, how to sing a solo in a black church. We were doing all that years ago that kind of started uh, the social media comedy trend. Yeah. And so um, that that's that's where I, I originated. So we did all that there. And then um, what people don't know is that when that was happening in 2011, 2012, that we had been at that since like 2001. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. Right. Uh, just just doing what we did as the playmakers up in the Seattle, Washington, Tacoma, Washington area. And then um, what I always did during that time is that I always handled all of our business. And so all of our business dealings, um, big and small at that time. And so a few years later, after people knew the Playmakers, Kev on stage, as you all know him now, started to build his brand. And that being my brother, we've always worked together. And even when he started building his brand and um, of, of videos that you guys see now that go viral almost every day, um, we worked together, but I wasn't necessarily managing him, even though we talked together because we're brothers. And so right. a couple of years back, Kevin talked to me and he was like, man, I need a new manager. I need somebody. I need you to do it. And, and then, um, when he, cl- as he climbed, when we made that decision, he kind of grew as an artist. And then I was helped helping to steer what his value was and what his direction was and what he could command financially on the other end. Okay. So they kind of grew together. So I just started managing Kevin. Then I started managing others and then handling all of our projects. Um, when it started going to brands and networks and all those type of things. And then I, you know, from then we started producing tours and, and stuff. And so I just kind of branched out um, doing more of what I did, just kind of created the animal um to to what i do now so yeah that's dope man and it's funny because you're talking about how y'all been doing it for a long time and i think the first things i remember seeing on youtube years and years ago was like clayton and was it clayton and earl was it the the shouting competitions and stuff like yes i've been yes i've been a fan for a long long time uh so i remember seeing all that stuff where uh they had the wigs and it was yeah yeah dude man those were our days and that was kevin at um you know you know the playmakers it was myself, Kevin, and um, Anthony Davis. And so Kevin and where we originally started was they used to play these two characters, as Damon said, called Clayton and Earl. And anybody that knows us from Tacoma, Washington, that's how we originally in doing those skits and, and, and uh, skits, sketches, and stay, stage plays in our church. Right. And so those were the K- characters. They were old men. Those were the Medeas of men. You know, they were men version of <laughs> 
But Diaz and they were crazy. Both Kevin and that were crazy. And if you know Kev, now Kev, Kev was really crazy as Clayton. Like, right. like he was legendary crazy as that old man. And so <laughs> um, that grew into us. That You know, we were called the Playmakers because we thought at one time, Damon, that our our the way we were going to tour the world was through plays. So we, okay. we were writers. That's why we called ourselves the playmakers because we wrote plays and did stuff on stage. And so we thought we were going to be the next Tyler Perry, the next David Talbert. And we weren't uh, because <laughs> we, even though our stuff was great, we didn't have no money. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. didn't have no money to do nothing. So um, I remember we were, I don't know if you know this story. We did probably our best play ever, which was, where, where we finally kind of put all the pieces together. Like, other plays were good, but the Till Death Tours part was kind of like the best version of ourselves. Does that make sense? And yeah. so, like, man, you know, we had the best musicians. We flew some guys, flew our friends in from North Carolina to play. We had background singers. We had all the, if you were, if you're, some, if you had a name in the Seattle area, you were in this play. Okay. We, we did it to the top of our level, and we actually flew in the 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 people from an entertainment company that used to tour Tyler Perry and toured all the other plays like I don't know if you remember when like Vivica Fox used to tour and Morris Chestnut used oh, yeah. to tour oh, yeah. plays like the black stage play thing was the biggest thing going and so um we flew them in to check the play out because we were trying to get them to pick us up they love the play yeah. the problem with the play industry at the time it was dead it had been dying for the last probably 18 months prior, ah, meaning you. they were losing money. And so what they were had to do with people like us, they were saying, we love your stuff. We think it could work with the right cast and you guys, but you guys have to be able to put some of the half of the money up front mm, with right. us. And half the money up front was like 250000 We was oh, like, what? Praise God. Yeah, we work at Popeye's. We do the chicken sandwich. <laughs> they had no money. Exactly. So... That ended our play stage play stuff, and then we found this thing called YouTube, and yeah, we that's went what's viral. up. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I think everything kind of shifted anyway, right? Everything shifted to yes. more online and yep. you know, getting stuff out there, and y'all were right on the cusp of it, right? So that's dope yes. that y'all you came in right at the right time and we was did. just real consistent with what you guys were doing, just hilarious stuff. So it was completely, completely the right time, just dope. Yeah, we didn't even think it was funny. Honestly, oh uh, really? Well, because we, you know, think about the internet and being on camera, video, audio, anything is that um, when you're live, you have instant gratification. Exactly, from the crowd. I got you. Yeah, I got you. So we we were filming stuff, but it was just me, Kevin, and there. Right. So we'd right. be like, we thought it was funny, maybe between ourselves, but we'd be like, people aren't gonna like this. We're in there playing a game. Yeah, you know I what I mean? You. Like we and then once we put it online. Uh, the people resonated with the content. I guess we knew how to connect with people in a way that we didn't know. So we were like pretty much taking hour and a half long stage plays, and now we had to turn them into three or four minute clips. Right, right. And we were just able to do that, and and it encompassed that, and then it, it grew from there. Like our first two videos, as you know, stuff black church girls say, stuff black parents say. Right. We really didn't think those videos were funny, but we just posted them because we had did the work. Right. We put them up at night, and in the morning. They've had all these views, and then the, you know the rest is kind of history from there. That's funny, and I think it's part of even the creative process because you got to go through, you edit the videos, you chop it up, and yeah. Stuff. And so you see it over and over. It's like, oh, okay, I guess this is kind of, but it's whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even it's even with this podcast, um, like I've been doing the interviews and stuff like that, and it's and I'm having a great time interviewing people and talking to everybody about like they hold you know, journey through church and all this different stuff and growing up in church and it's hilarious. And then I'm editing them and I'm like, Oh, this is still pretty funny. But I, I then I'm thinking, I don't know if anybody's really going <laughs> to care, but I'm, I, I really, I have a funny feeling that people will really um, enjoy these conversations. And this, it's just been some hilarious stuff, some interesting stuff all around. That's awesome, man. I think, I think one of the, the big thing is in this day and age, this dispensation of time, if I could preach okay, um, right. that, that it is, it is the, it is time to create your own, make your own lane, do it the way you want to do it. And if you create it, they will come. The field of dreams, if you make it, they will come. Right. It's more of the things where, where you have those ideas, you have those thoughts of doing something. And now it's are you going to 
follow your mind? Are you going to follow your vision? Are you going to follow your dream? Are you going to follow your idea to, to the next level to see what can happen with it? And I appreciate the fact that you're actually doing that uh, because you'll get the return. You know, it may not look like what you think it's going to look like, right. but it's going to return something. And then as a business person, you're naturally going to tweak to make it grow the same way you did with church funny. Right. You know what I mean? Like when it was just an idea. So I applaud you for that, brethren. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Man, let's get into um, how you grew up in church and like give a shout out to your home church, what kind of church you came up in, how was, you know, your whole uh, upbringing? Oh, man, listen, we are what they call pew babies. We yes, are sir. people that were from 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 day zero, we were at church. You know, yeah. so um, we grew up in El Paso, Texas, uh, my home church, Bethlehem Temple, uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. That's P.A.W. Um, P.A.W. is like Church of God in Christ. It's the Jesus only version of Church of God in Christ. <laughs> That's a good you know, way to put it. They, 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 they uh, you know, we're, we're bloods, they're crips. <laughs> we're bloods because, you know, there's there's no other name whereby men, whereby men can be saved but the name of Jesus. So you have to baptize in the name of Jesus. Okay. And Church of God in Christ says you can baptize in the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. And that's why they fight each other. So one church went <laughs> right. left and one church went right. And we went, you know, our family was PAW. A lot of our family is still PAW. And so a lot of my roots, everything I knew for probably the first 18, 19, 20 years of my life was all church. Yeah, all of, all of my friends were church. Right. My my fake cousin was with church. Oh yeah. My 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 aunts and uncles were all church members. My whole life was surrounded by church. I mean, we did church if we could do. There was something going on at church almost every day, and we were all even if it was church cleanup, we were there to help clean up. And it was just that's you. What you did, your life was. You go to your house. You go to school. You come back from school, you eat dinner, and you go to church. Yep. Yeah. That was much. it. That was every, every, everything we did. And everything we did. And I think it's hard for for people to, that don't live that life to really understand that everything you did, survive, uh, you know, was surrounded by church. Yeah. And that's who that's who we were as as kids. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's funny because, like you said, every all your activities revolved around church for the most part. Yes. The stuff you did on the weekends. Um, all most of your friends, if not all of your friends, was from church, you know. So it was yep. definitely this. It was yep. a whole bubble that we lived in. The, the whole bubble. bubble, yeah, absolutely. whole bubble. Yeah, yep. you coming up in church, you must have seen. Well, look, even just as you as a writer and comedian, growing up in church, I know you've seen a bunch of ridiculous stuff happen in church, hilarious stuff happen in church. Um, man, share with us some of the uh, a story or two or three. That you could okay. think of or some funny stuff you've seen happen in church? What, I, what I'll try to think of a few. I have a ton, but you, when you try to put your finger on them, you can't necessarily think about them. But yeah. I will say this. If you've ever watched the Playmakers YouTube page of, of all of our videos, how to sing a solo in a black church, the ones I named, how to preach, all those, how to shout, those are the comedy that we saw every week. Right. Because we we were... The thing that made us um, connect with people, resonate with people was how the tasteful way that we made our comedy about church. Yeah. And what I was saying was, is like we were making fun of ourselves, okay. not making fun of them, if that makes sense. We okay, were yeah. church people making fun of ourselves yeah, of and course. not an outsider looking in the church window like, look at these people in here doing this and doing that. Right, and so right. that's why people could understand it. So a lot of the church shouting, people falling over, the church antics that you get, that was just life. That's just how it was. So yeah. I just remember, the, the main thing I remember that's funny about church is my house. Okay. And it, it, what we would do when we got home was, as kids, would mimic the things that we saw at church. Like, oh yeah, you can't necessarily laugh while you're in service. You could snicker and cover your mouth and cover your face. But when you got home, you can say, what did Deacon Peterson do? And you can sit there and what did Deacon Miller do? And you can act that out. And those, <laughs> are, the, those are the funny, really, really funny things. When you got into the parking lot with your friends right. and you, you mimic the, 
the shout that Sister Lewis did and how <laughs> she almost fell over the in remembrance of me table. Lord. Uh that that kind of stuff. Or like like uh when somebody was getting in the in the in the prayer line because the guest uh evangelist was there and they pray for them and how the guest evangelist put them on the ground. Um and be like, <laughs> look at how they fell and their legs was up and oh, she Lord. was trying to hold her skirt down. <laughs> we laugh at stuff like that. Like, but it really happened. Not like, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. sometimes when you see it other times is people are making fun of that, but like we're watching that happen yeah. and reli- and reliving those moments. Um, probably the, one of the funniest things that we talk about now um, that I saw in, in church was that we, we got in a fight. Oh, wow. In church, a real fight. Um, and so with our pastor, not, Wait. He was on our. He was on our team. He was on our team. In he was like, in our game. He <laughs> was in our game. Oh no! This this can't be we, good, dude. We made a we made a we made a video. Uh, like I kind of made fun of Church of God in Christ versus PAW, yeah. and like they pulled up to the church, and a fight happened because they're technically Bloods and Crips. But one time, um, our our church musician, who's my my boy now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say his name. Most people are like I ain't gonna say his name. Justin Obi is his name. That's Shout my boy. Shout that's my that's, that's my that's my little brother. He was a wayward musician, <laughs> and at the time, and so he great organist, and um and he was our key. But he was young, you know. Obi was still early, early twenties, late mm-hmm. teens, early twenties, and so he would still, you know, be he's a he's a preacher of the gospel now. So he tells his testimony himself. So he was a you know kind of living. One foot in, one foot out. You know what I'm saying? And so he would be in, uh, he might go play in the club on Saturday and then play with us Sunday. So I guess the night before he had, was at the club and they got a fight in a fight with this, with his cat. He got in a okay. fight with him and, um, and got the, got the best of him. Amen. <laughs> and so, uh, he got the best of him. And so they knew who he was. They knew where he worshiped. They knew all that. And they knew us too. So one day I'm at church and I'm in the lobby and I, and this guy that I know doesn't come to church comes in, but I know him. And right. he calls me, he said, Hey Jay, what's up? I said, what's up, man? What you doing? You coming to church? He said, no ninja. I'm here to see your boy. I said, your boy, my boy, what are you talking about? He said, listen, if you don't go get old by the church, then boys is about to run up in there and get them. I said, oh, during, wow. I said, during service? <laughs> wow. I said, you, I said, bro, you tripping. I said, now, hold on. I said, hold on. My wife's in there. My kids is here. You tripping, bro. Like, you know For me. Real? Right. And you know us. Like, you know Kev. You know, and you know, you know, you know, you know the homies. So, you got to chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, you tripping right. right now. And he was like, okay, Jay, well, you got to tell him to come outside. And I said, okay, let me, let me, let me grab him. Let me do whatever. Me being the man that I am, uh-huh. I, 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 before I grabbed him, I said, who's outside? And he said, we outside. I went outside. There was about five or six cats oh, no. outside. And one of the cats was the cat he got with last night. Yeah. Now, if you ever seen anybody that's ready to fight, um, you know, he's huffing and puffing. Yeah. Uh, fists are clenched. Clenched. Dreads are, dreads are hanging in his face. He looks like he's still on last night. Right. So right. The, the, he had had, uh, you know, the Hennessy communion was still in his body. <laughs> and so running deep. He, he running warm in his veins. Warm. In and his and so, veins. you know, that, that Hennessy will give you courage. Amen. Amen. If you catch me in the, if you catch me in the earthly realm, um, it'll give you liquid <laughs> courage. You know, uh, the, the songwriter says, uh, don't get full of that alcohol and in the club and think you bad. <laughs> and so, uh, he, he was full of that alcohol. And he thought he was bad and so knew he was bad. And so he was there to avenge himself. And I was like, oh, my God. So whatever it is, them boys, I mean, it's like like it was like a pit bull. Like, like, and he sees the fence. Right. And he's getting ready to break the chain. And the fence is open. He was ready to go, Damon. And I was like, goodness. So nobody knows what's going on but me. So I'm trying to get all my cats together. Like, hey, listen, come here, man. And church is getting ready to let out at the same time. Like, right. it's like that end of service. Like, they're closing. So immediately signal to Ove. I'm like, I just go in. Like, kind of, 
our church wasn't huge so you can see me from the door and uh and i'm just like bro come here and he's like what's up i'm just like come I'm giving him the eye and i'm telling like all of the homies i'm like bro like come on right like, right just i just just come here right now i'm trying to be uh uh focused but discreet because discreet right, because right. it's like you got you got you got about 400 people getting ready to get let out of service you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like golly so he comes out and he calls me and he's like what's going on i said bro jay and them outside he said jay i said he said oh let's go get it i said no let's not go get it <laughs> let's go get it he just ready oh, he said it's no. whatever let's go get it on oh, and me and so i'm like bro you gotta chill we gotta come outside so they don't come in here right. and then we gotta you know what i mean figure this out on the side of the church and I'll try to work it through for you. He said, Jay, I'm not tripping. It's going to won't be on. Forget them ninjas. He didn't say that. But he said, right, you got, got you. you catch me in the earthly realm again. And so I got you. Uh, I I grab him. Kevin and them are, are, are flanked on my side. Uh, and uh, I think Ant was flanked on my side. My cat AJ was flanked on the side. You know, and then Pastor wasn't flanked yet. But he was catching word of what was getting ready to happen. So, but here's the oh, here's the cold part. The dude that was the minister in the military that's supposed to be one of the you know parking lot security and stuff. Yeah, he yeah. sees what's going on. He go inside. I'm like, what? Why do you? We need you, Look, right? What are you doing? We need your help. Nah, fam, I'm inside. So wow, um, we come outside and they see them. They're like, and I say, listen, before anything happens, we got all these people coming out of church. That's one thing I respected because they they were church. Uh, everybody that was in that uh, front door slash parking lot respected the church to an extent because when I would say something about like, listen, we got women here, we got children here, we got people right. being let out, we got to go to the side to the back. They respected that, and they were like, "All right, cool. Let's walk around this way." You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And so, um, word was getting to the pastor at the same time, and then um, uh, the 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 deacon slash parking lot dude was trying to get all the women to stay inside. And then, like my there, there's this is a side note. Meantime, children's church is being let out. So my son, oh, no. my son, my daughter, Kev's kids. They're all coming out running. If you think about a church, it, it's the church parking lot, and then it's the youth, the, the daycare. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they're not they're two separate buildings. So the kids are running from the daycare to the other church to go meet their parents, whatever. Right. So they see us. The kids see us outside, and they want to come with their dads. There's my dad, right. and I'm like, <laughs> no, go with oh, your mom. No. And so we're trying to tell them whatever. So all of that's happening all at the same time. So anyway, we get to the side of the church. Uh, and then a car pulls up hard in the parking lot. Oh no! Run up, no! Run up on these fools! Oh, are you serious, <laughs> I, bro? I wish, I wish I was lying. Dude, I wish I was lying. Uh, and then, and then, next thing you know, uh, the cat J just punches uh, O, and then it's just a free for all. It's just a wow. fight. So I'm, tr I'm trying. My my dude that came in the church to warn me. He's pulled me back because he's not letting me jump in. He's like, no, 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 Jay, let it go, let it go. And the two, me, Kev, are like, everybody's holding each other back, but there's a couple of cats fighting. So we're right. trying to, like, get into, I don't want to necessarily fight, but I'm not going to let them jump, my boy. You know what I'm saying? Right, I'm, right. Not, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm from Compton because I'm not. So, um, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not going to run, but I'm not here to get beat up either. So look, and I'm from South Central LA, man. And so it's funny, I've never seen anybody show up at the church to fight like that. That is hilarious. Right. Now, I mean, LA is pretty big and there are churches on every corner. So I'm sure it's happened somewhere. Right. Um and you know, the, the most of what we dealt with was bullets raining down in the parking lot. Right. Um, and that, and, night service. And that's kind of and that's normal bullets raining yeah. down in the service. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, that's right. That's so <laughs> In the in the middle of all that, now here comes Pastor, who's actually Ant's dad, and he literally comes in and he grabs two of the dudes fighting, and he yokes them up by their neck. And oh just, wow! And he's he's not 
And he's just saying, young man, young man, young man, listen to me, young man, young man, young man. I like applauded him. He's from Chicago, though. I applauded uh -huh. young man, young man. And they they didn't, they listened. They were like, young man, like, calm down, young man. Calm down, young man. Calm down, uh -huh. young man. And he just got him, like, yoked up. Um, and they, they're, they're, they're calming themselves. So it's like all of that's happening at one time. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And so, uh, and eventually, you know, uh, they stopped, they went their way, police were called, and, you know, they kind of let them go. I mean, the police didn't let them go, but they kind of, you know, we got to get out of here. Cobra, right. retreat, Cobra, retreat. <laughs> you know. Cobra! Cobra! Cobra. Yeah. Destro! <laughs> Destro! You, you, you know, you know, oh. so. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Shout out to G.I. Joe. Right, shout out, shout out. And Cobra Commander. And um, Cobra Commander. So. Uh, yeah, and, and that was probably, man, listen, that was probably the craziest story. I mean, I have a ton, but like that, all, that one always sticks out because Dude, that's you know, how many people have really gotten a fight at church? I mean, there's that's probably what I'm saying. several, like, you know, but we laughed about that later. Like Ninja, we, uh, he was fighting at the church. Right. Yeah. Like, wow. Like that, that was a great to have on the resume. So it was just, yeah, man, that's, that's probably one of my craziest stories ever of amongst other things. Dude, did uh pastor have to come out in like his complete robe and stuff? Cause that probably would have, he helped. came out <laughs> No, he wasn't in his robe. Uh, he, I so guess the robe would have calmed it down that's, a little right. quicker. What happened was he, um, you know, he had spoke and that's why I was saying word was getting back to the pastor because yeah, right. he had spoke and then he went up to his office. Yeah, I guess. So. You. Uh, usually what he does, if you know anybody that speaks, they usually are underneath their robe. They might got a t-shirt on or whatever. So I could tell that he came out in that because he was still a little sweaty, but he, he had took off the robe and came right back down. Right. Right. You know, so he didn't, he was like, what's going on? And came right back down. So yeah. yeah oh man. Yeah. It was crazy, bro. Completely wild. dude. It was crazy. It was crazy, bro. It was crazy. It was crazy. Okay, so before we get to our next segment, we want to give a quick shout out to our podcast sponsor, and that's churchydate.com. Churchy Date is the best new Christian dating site where the goal is to connect single Christians through faith, laughter, and love. It's got all the features you'd want on a dating site, plus some really fun and churchy questions to make sure there's no unequal yokes, a man being formed. <laughs> so while other dating sites cost around 30 bucks a month, Churchy Date's premium membership is only $5 a month, and they've even got super discounted six-month and yearly plans. Register and create your profile for free on churchydate.com and use the promo code CHURCHYLIFE to try a premium membership out completely free for one month. Go ahead, browse for your sanctified boo at churchydate.com. All right, let's get into this next segment called The Holy Hot Seat, and The Holy Hot Seat is where we hit you with random rapid fire questions to test your level of holiness and sanctification. <laughs> oh Lord. Amen. To see how much you really love the Lord. Okay. All right. You ready? Yes. No. All right. What? Hold on. <laughs> what, what level of sanctification do I have? Do I need to pass this test? Is it a test? We'll find out when this is over. <laughs> All right. Let's get it. All right. Let's go. So this is a two part question. Mm hmm. What was the best part and the worst part about growing up in church? The best part about growing up in church was the family aspect. Um, even though everything we did uh, was a, uh, was centered around church, it was right. very family cent oriented. Um, okay. Like I said, everybody was your aunt, everybody was your uncle, everybody was your your cousin, or your brother, your sister, and you were always with those people. So it was a village. It was the village mentality. It takes a village to raise a child. We were right. all we we stuck together. Um, we rode together. Uh, you know, if you needed rides for church, um, if we were to get in a fight, we fought together. If we were gonna if we were gonna eat, we ate together, and so <laughs> all those things. And then. You know, it was fun. It was like being able to be around your best friends all the time. So you always knew that these people are going to be there for you. Even when I started playing my football games and, you know, being on varsity football and stuff, these same people were coming to my games and supporting right, me right. and all that and all that kind of stuff. So that was the thing. Uh, the worst part of it was, I think, 
uh, because we were very, very, very religious, was not understanding um, the difference in, um, how can I say this gently? Uh, Remember, your, your level of sanctification is on the line here. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, could, we weren't allowed to do everything and thinking that any and everything you did was a sin. Right. Going to the movies, sin. Uh, that's where all the girls wear jean skirts. If you don't, you sin and you showing too much. You can't skate, can't go skating, yeah. can't go bowling. We couldn't do the we couldn't do the fun stuff. So it made you feel bad for having fun when you when your family snuck off on the low to do those things. Right, be like right. we ain't supposed to be doing this. We ain't supposed to be doing that. So it made you feel like you had to keep that stuff a secret when you actually grew up and you started understanding. Uh, the Bible and Jesus in your relationship for yourself, then you begin to understand that those are more man-made things. Yeah. But it wasn't necessarily put there to control you, but just so you didn't fall into temptation of sin. They were trying to do that to help you not mess up. Right, right. But they were making everything evil instead of just teaching you how to be in those places and still live uh, a life that glorifies God. Yeah, definitely like a lack of balances. <laughs> yes. Is, yeah, though I, I definitely understand. I agree with that. Um, a lot of that happened. Um, yeah. And I, and it's it's similar for Church of God in Christ and different. I mean, there were some similarities and some differences, and it even depends on what area you lived in. Like, if you're a Church of God in Christ in the South, it was very much like exactly what you're talking about. There was no going to the movies. There was no right any of this. No having fun in general. Um, Church right. of God in Christ in like on the West Coast was a little more free. Um, it well, it depends. It depends on who you ask because <laughs> some people still was like, "Oh, y'all going to the moving pictures?" Like, uh, right, so, yeah. exactly, moving pictures. Yeah, exactly. So you know who was saying right. the pi- the pi- the picture show, right, <laughs> right, right exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely understand that. Uh, let's see what's so back home. So growing up, I, I'm pretty sure you did the same thing. Um, that we used to do back in the day after church you had to go eat somewhere what was your favorite after church spot to eat back in the day well i actually hated the after church spot because we hate we went to the same spot every sunday was first cafeteria oh first oh (laughs) man i hate it i hate it because because we just ate it so much i mean they knew our names (laughs) they knew my family's names we were going there for years. I'm talking about people. We knew when the people were going, the workers were going to retire. Yep. We knew when the manager That's changed because we were there before the manager. <laughs> we, were, we were, I mean, like they became family friends. Like I'm not even being funny about no, that. I, like, that's I understand. honest truth. Because like, like they became, yeah, it was crazy. So that I, I, I hated going there. But actually, when I got older, I kind of enjoyed it because it represented something different yeah you know what i mean when you're younger you were like yeah we're just like man we here all the time right we went through we went through like three remodels with the rest oh wow like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were y'all there like opening day every time to like cut the ribbon man, bro day? like i'm telling you <laughs> like it, family's they, here. pretty much like i'm telling you i remember when I've been going to first cafeteria for so long. I remember when they used to be more formal cafeteria yeah. to where they had nice drapes and curtains in there. Uh-huh. And they actually used to have a live uh, grand piano and somebody used to play oh, with a wow. fireplace. And like, that's how it, it changed. It got cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, yeah. And so they took the grand piano on the curtains out. And then they put a drive through window in there, and that's uh, they might have, they did it. They did it. But that's how low level it became. No, I got you. Pretty much. Yeah, so that's it's just it was just different. It, I remember in some cities it went from first cafeteria to first buffet. Yeah, like almost how Golden Corral was. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. That's how it is. Out here um, in Texas. To where you know cafeteria, you, yeah, you got a you got a you know the cafeteria. You know cafeteria is like school lunch. Yep. You you sit behind the glass window yep. and you point to what they want, and you got they got to hand it to you. Yep, buffet you get to serve yourself, so all the kids go touch all the chicken. Right, exactly. And then you get. And then you get the ones after they touched it. See? And that's why everybody got salmonella and everybody was sick. And so I just remember the original first to when they went all the way to first buffet. Dude. That's how OG I am. No, I remember they so. used, that's how they were in LA too. Um 
Because, yeah, we were both on the West Coast, and that's how they were. Yeah. Because you'd have to go back up to the window to ask for something. I was like, yep. hey, can I get a, yep. another piece of chicken? Yep. And they'd be looking at you like, how many pieces of chicken did you have already? Yeah. Like, man, right. Just... I'd be like, man, we pay for the all you can eat. Exactly. Just give me the chicken, fam. They, they looking at you funny like, I don't know how right. many times you've been up here. Look, just y'all don't. And give me the, and give me the strawberry pie. See? <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, that's funny. My kids are it all is. on Golden Corral right now. If we, after church, man, they just be ready. Like, we going to Golden Corral Foods. <laughs> they put foods yeah. on the end of it. Like, I didn't, t- nobody <laughs> told y'all that was the name of this place. What are you Hold on. Hold on. Golden Corral Foods. Foods. <laughs> that is hilarious. They say it every time. I'm like, where did y'all get that from? <laughs> Listen, they said it's like Whole Foods, Daddy. It's Golden Corral Foods. <laughs> exactly. That's funny, bro. Yeah, they're, they're That's funny. funny. Oh man, what's one of your favorite spots to eat after church now? You got one? Home. Okay, that makes sense. I'm being, you know, like um, Tammy cooks very good, and because we're on the road so much, yeah, yeah. Um, I I have to eat out a lot yeah. just just for the sake of you know don't have a kitchen everywhere we go, and then um, but to be able to have a home cooked meal is really good, and then it brings me back to the time like you know. Um, like growing up, like it was either furs or we cooked. Okay. And if you cooked, then everybody came over. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, like, like if, if I didn't go to furs, you didn't go to furs either. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we, 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 they made pot roast and, you know, uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and they used the gravy from the pot roast. I, you know, we had real cooks in our family. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Real brown, real brown gravy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, and 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 greens and yams and all that macaroni and cheese yeah. and 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 my grandma used to make homemade yeast rolls um, where she and uh, she was the lady you know I come from church when uh, between Sunday school and regular church they gave you snack okay yeah yeah and and so we used to eat eat like in the middle of church they used to make a soup and sandwiches oh, and all wow. kinds of stuff and my grandma did that so what she also used to do. Is hustle the church out of their kitchen, and if she had to make yeast rolls, she would roll her bread at church. Oh, okay, cool. so it could rise and do whatever. So that's how we used to eat. So now, if I ever get a home cooked Sunday dinner, I really enjoy those because it's just it's it's good to be at home and be able to like be at home, be with your family, yeah. people running around, have a good time. And it's whatever. It doesn't mean that people are over here, but like being able to sit here, watch the game, chill out, right, right. like, and not have to be out nowhere, you know, and know that your food is going to be really good because you know, my wife is making it. So yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. How about what's your favorite non-churchy pastime? Non-churchy pastime. That's right. Outside um, of just worshiping the Lord. Uh, what, else, <laughs> what else did you enjoy doing? Um, As a kid? No, right now. Oh, um, man, you know, really, it's uh, teaching my kids. Oh, yeah? I really enjoy, yeah, like being around. Like, like you know, people would maybe think it like, you know, because we get to, like, we literally tour, not the world, but a lot of the earth. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, went out of country and did that. I mean, like, all that stuff was great. I love that. Um, but being able to experience things, family is really important to me. Yeah. So being able to experience things with my family with my children doing dad stuff with them um and you know even if it's just teaching them life lessons talking with them i enjoy that stuff uh because um you see your legacy like in front of your eyes and um you want to leave a good one and you you realize that i'm the only father that these kids get yeah and so you want to be able to do that so i really enjoy like uh spending time with them like i wake up every day 4 30 in the morning because my son we go to basketball training in the morning but that's something that we do together you know he has a coach but we do it together so like when he's older and if you know he has dreams of making the nba one day he might make it he might not right. but he's working hard for it but he'll always remember that well i remember me and my dad used to get up at 4 30 in the morning you know what i'm saying right, or, right, yeah. you know my or my daughter my older daughter calling me because she done messed up one of her credit cards and i'm helping her learn that life lesson with how your credit is important to your life and how to fix it and how to do better and how to create good payment history. So to be able to teach them those things about life um, as they grow into young adulthood, like I I enjoy those things. 
Um, and it makes me work hard on the other end yeah. of stuff that the, probably the world would probably enjoy. You know what I mean? Because they're like, man, that looks really cool to do. And it is. But it's there's no satisfaction um, like making sure that your your family is okay. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's a dope answer. Yeah. I love it. All right, last one. This should be interesting. You ready? Um, okay. If the spirit hits you just right, which one are you? Are you dancing in the aisles? Are you falling over crying? You throwing your hands up? Are you running around the church doing the laps? Is it all of the above? Is it none of the above? Wh- which one are you? I am a waterfall of tears. Right. Cry baby. Yeah. I'm not running nowhere. <laughs> right. I'm, first of all, first of all, I'm, I'm not, I didn't, I got these clothes on. I ain't about, not about to sweat this out. <laughs> first of all, let, let's get that clear. Exactly. I'm not. Right. And then second of all, I'm not an antique person as much as we do on stage or whatever. Yeah. It's really, uh, really emotional, sentimental for me. So I'm probably standing there crying or have to take my seat and, you know, head in my hands right. and, you know, bawling like a baby and not, and try not to ball like my son is looking at me. So I'm trying not to like cry like I just got a whooping. Like I'm trying to have some <laughs> manliness about me, but nah, man. I'm also going to let him see you cry. So he knows. All right. No, no, no. He can see me cry. I just don't want him to see me ball. Like, no, so I need like, you to do we need to do. I need to call mom. No, I need you, you to okay? ball up in the fetal position uh, under a pew. Right. And just rock and hold yourself. And yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see me like that. Like you're doing too much, bro. Like people are looking. At you. It's all good. So it's a respectable baby cry. I got but you. no, I'm a, I'm a crier, man. I and then as I get older, I'm even more emotional for some reason. Um, you know, it could be the right video on see on Facebook, yeah. and I'm sitting here wiping my eyes and stuff. So I'm definitely a cry. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, cool. Well, this has been dope. It's been great having you on here. I really appreciate you taking out some time and doing this with me and sharing a peek into your churchy life and bringing the hilarious, ridiculous stories you brought with you, man. This has been great. Oh, man, I, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate being on. I, you, you didn't have to ask me to do it, my God. But we counted all joy. Counted we all. counted a blessing oh. to be in the number, to be in the midst, to be one of the chosen. Hey. I, I, I see, they, they, uh, you know, hey, and I man. appreciate you, man. Appreciate you using me uh, to be on your platform, bro. Yeah, man. We'll let everybody know where they can find you on social media if they're not following you already. Um, whatever projects you have coming out, whatever you want to talk about, feel free. Um, well, uh, find me on social media. Um, Jason Fredericks. Um, my nickname is J No A because all my social media spells Jason J No A S O N Fredericks F R E D E R I C K S. Right. So um, I'm on like I'm on that on Instagram. I'm on that on Facebook um, regularly. If you follow. Um, our fan page is the Playmakers Entertainment on um, Facebook uh, to follow that page. A lot of videos have gone viral from there, um, e- even just stuff that you see in church all the time right. or or the world or whatever. And then, you know, projects we have coming up. Um, are, are you familiar with Trap Karaoke? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing my first show, test show, to see if it works in Nashville on uh, September 29th. Uh, it's called Gospel Oki. Okay. And so we're going to do that and see if it's a show that people come out to and if they like, then, uh, we'll, we might put that on a, on a, on a tour, um, churchy for no reason tour. Um, we're thinking about, uh, we might have some new dates for that coming in November, uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Look out for that. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, man, um, and this, I'll talk to you about this offline. I have a new version of the Tiny Desk Concerts. Are you familiar with Tiny Desk Concerts, Damon? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So I have a version of that um, that I'm putting together and getting ready to produce starting late September, um, going into October with uh, some artists that will be known in the, more in the faith-based world. And, you know, just any world. It's not going to be stuck to anything um so we were calling it um i don't know if you have favorite artists i know you do damn it but um i don't necessarily know who they are but sometimes you sit with some of your favorite artists and like and you watch their videos online right. and you see their 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 sessions and or they might be in the studio and you'd be like man if i could have just been a fly on the wall in that you know what i mean right, like right. just to sit there and just take in that or 
or fly on the wall on that conversation. So the name of this new series, this new concert series is going to be fly on the wall presents. Okay. And so producing that show. Oh, uh, and so we're going to see what happens with that. So some, some artists you have heard of and some of you haven't will be featured on there. And so uh, that's some of the things we're working on. And then, Last but not least, we're working on some big things for Kev on stage and, you know, uh, with our agency where, you know, we're trying to land these television and movie stuff going into the next year. Uh, so Righteous and Ratchet is going on tour. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, Righteous and Ratchet is touring um, in the September, all of some of October and November and Love Hour Conference. If you watch Kevin Melissa's Love Hour um, podcast. Right. There, the Love Hour Conference is next year in Atlanta. You can register for that. So it's like we got a lot of stuff going. A lot of we stuff. working. We working, man. And so all those things are there. And um, we hope that you find something that you like, that we're putting out something that you like. And uh, you, you, we, we touch base with you that way, you know, somehow, some way. Yeah, man. And we'll put your information in the show notes. They can click right over to find you, uh, find the stuff you're working on. Okay. Okay, man. Yeah, man. Again, of course, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Seriously. Yeah, man. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks. For full episode information, show notes, and links to anything discussed on this episode, visit churchylife.com. For feedback and guest suggestions, email churchfunny at gmail.com. If you love what we're doing, show your support with a positive rating and review on iTunes. Please don't forget to subscribe and share Churchy Life with your friends and family.